This is Professor Russell James coming to you from Texas Tech University. Welcome to today's lecture from Visual Plan Giving, an introduction to the law and taxation of charitable gift planning. Welcome to Charitable Lead Trusts Part 3, Special Trust Types. This is Professor Russell James. A step clat, that is a form of non-grantor charitable lead annuity trust, provides for steadily increasing payments to the charity during the fixed term of the trust. The payments are not flat, but they are known in advance. The motivation for pushing more of the charitable payments to the later stages of the trust term is that this allows more assets to stay in the trust longer. For assets that outperform the initial Section 7520 rate, the longer they stay in the trust, the more excess growth they will generate. For example, the IRS has approved using annual 20% increases in the charitable payment amounts. Returning to the previous example from the previous lecture, a zeroed out charitable lead annuity trust with a $10 million initial transfer could be generated by 11 annual payments starting at $362,000 a year and increasing by 20% each year. Taking this approach, instead of paying the flat annuity rate, in other words, the $1,021,785 per year, means that the charity receives lower payments at the start of the trust, but larger payments at the end of the trust. For instance, the first annual payment would be $362,000, but the final annual payment would be $2,241,409. If trust assets grew at 8% annually instead of the 2% initial 7520 interest rate, the standard flat payout annuity in a zeroed out non-grantor charitable lead trust would leave $6.3 million for the heirs but the 20% annual increasing step annuity in a zeroed out non-grantor charitable lead trust would leave $7.9 million. This extra $1.6 million in tax-free transfer results from keeping the faster growing assets in the trust longer. If, however, the assets underperformed the 2% initial Section 7520 interest rate, both the traditional annuity and the step annuity would exhaust the trust and the heirs would receive nothing. The more extreme version of keeping assets inside the charitable lead annuity trust is known as a, quote, shark fin charitable lead annuity trust. The name comes from a visualization of the payment amounts on a graph where the large charitable payments all come in the last year or two of the trust, forming a steep shark fin-like graph. The benefit to such a payout scheme is the same as with a step clat charitable lead annuity trust. The longer the assets are kept inside the charitable lead trust, the more excess growth they will be able to generate assuming that they outperform the Section 7520 rate. Using these more extreme payouts is a more aggressive approach because it has not been approved or disapproved by the IRS. Although Revenue Procedure 2007-45 seems to allow any payments. Some argue that the 20% annual increases, which have been specifically allowed in PLR 20121-16045, should be treated as a maximum. The argument is that 20% increase in annuities is the maximum allowed for grantor retained annuity trusts, and so perhaps the IRS will dispute charitable lead annuity trusts that exceed this level. For charitable lead trusts paying to a charity for a lifetime, the actual amount left for the non-charitable beneficiary depends not only on the rate of growth of the assets, but also on the length of the measuring life. For example, if a charitable lead trust pays $100,000 per year for the life of a person whose age suggests a life expectancy of 30 years, the present value of that charitable payment would be $100,000 times 22.3965, or $2,239,650, that is at the 2% Section 7520 rate. However, if the person lived for only two years, the actual payments to charity would total only 
$200,000. Just as before, gift tax is paid based upon the projected transfer to the non-charitable beneficiary, not on the actual transfer. Consequently, if a donor transferred $2.2 million to the previous charitable lead trust, with projected distributions to charity having a present value over $2.2 million, there would be no gift or estate tax on the transfer. This remains true even though the shortened life in reality would have resulted in $2 million being transferred to the heirs with no gift or estate taxes. Recognizing this reality led to the practice of creating quote, viatical charitable lead trusts, also known as vulture charitable lead trusts, where the measuring life for the charity's payments would be a younger person with a terminal disease. In response, the law was changed to limit the people who can be named as the measuring life for a charitable lead trust. To prevent widespread viatical shopping, the measuring life for a charitable lead trust is now limited to the donor, any ancestor of the remainder beneficiaries, or the spouse of either of these. Thus, taking advantage of a terminal diagnosis for tax planning purposes is still theoretically possible, but only within the much smaller close family group. Additionally, a person may not be used as the measuring life for a charitable lead trust if there is at least a 50% probability that the individual will die within one year. Such a probability would be an issue of fact and subject to expert testimony. However, if the person who is the measuring life actually lives for at least 18 months after being named, then there is no requirement to meet that 50% probability test. In charitable remainder trusts, it is quite common for the donor to retain the right to change the charitable beneficiary of the trust. So long as the trust requires that some charity will ultimately receive the funds, this retention of power creates no problems. In contrast, if the donor retains this power in a non-grantor charitable lead trust, the gift and estate tax advantages of the trust will be lost. Why? Retaining the power to change the charitable beneficiaries causes the assets to remain in the donor's estate. Because the assets have not left the donor's estate, they are still subject to estate taxes at the donor's death. This same reality does not create tax problems for the charitable remainder trust. The charitable remainder trust assets may be included in the donor's estate, but when those assets are all transferred to charity at death, they're not subject to estate taxation because of the unlimited charitable estate tax deduction. In contrast, the charitable lead trust passes its assets to non-charitable beneficiaries at termination. Thus, inclusion of the charitable lead trust assets in the donor's estate at death can result in estate taxation. Although the donor may not have this power, it is acceptable for the donor's spouse or some other family member to have the power to change charitable beneficiaries. Because it is not the donor who holds the power, this will not result in the trust assets being included in the donor's estate. Note, however, that if the charitable lead trust will pay to a, quote, skip person, such as a grandchild with living parents, it is important that no one retains the right to change the charitable beneficiary. This is discussed briefly a bit later in the section on generation skipping transfer taxes. It is also acceptable if the donor has the power to, quote, request, but not direct, an independent trustee to change the charitable beneficiary. Because the donor does not have the legal right to change the charitable beneficiary, keeping this right does not create estate tax problems. Along the same lines, it is perfectly acceptable for the charitable lead trust to pay to a donor advised fund. Even if the donor has the right to advise the charity regarding the timing and recipients of subsequent charitable transfers. For an example, see PLR 963027. This right is only the right to give, quote, advice. It is not a legal right to force a particular charitable transfer. Because it is not an enforceable legal right, it does not result in inclusion of the assets in the donor's estate. The non-grantor charitable lead trust may name the donor's donor advised fund as the charitable beneficiary because the donor has no legal right to control the distributions out of those funds, only a right to, quote, advise regarding distributions. 
Similarly, if the donor's private family foundation is named as a charitable beneficiary, it is important to show that the donor has no legal right to control the ultimate charitable grant recipients through his control of the private foundation. If the donor had this right, then the charitable lead trust assets would still be included in the donor's estate. In order to prove that the donor has no ability to direct the ultimate distribution of those assets paid to the donor's private foundation, the terms of the gift should prohibit the donor from acting with regard to funds coming from the charitable lead trust. Further, such funds should be maintained by the private foundation in a separate account. There are no problems with inclusion in the donor's estate if the donor's spouse, children, or friends can control these separate funds in their role as foundation trustees, but the donor must be excluded. Allowing another person to change the charitable beneficiary of the non-grant or charitable lead trust creates negative consequences for purposes of generation skipping transfer taxes, but allowing others to keep the right to control distributions made from the private foundation that is the recipient of charitable lead trust funds does not create any such problems. The IRS has allowed early termination of a fixed term charitable lead annuity trust. However, it has not allowed the division to be based upon the present value of the relative income and remainder rights, as has sometimes been allowed with the Charitable Remainder Trust. Instead, the charity must be paid all of the scheduled payments at the time of termination, without discounting for receiving the payments early. Thus, if 10 years remained in a fixed-term charitable lead trust where the charity received a million dollars per year, an early termination would require the immediate payment to the charity of $10 million, rather than the present value of the right to receive these payments over the next 10 years. Charitable lead unit trusts, in contrast, may not be terminated early. The primary estate and gift tax advantage to be gained through the use of a non-grantor charitable lead trust comes from the taxation of the projected transfer to the heirs rather than the actual transfer to the heirs. This same advantage arises for generation skipping transfer taxes only with the charitable lead unit trust, CLUT or CLUT, but not with the charitable lead annuity trust, CLAT or CLAT. With a charitable lead annuity trust, the generation skipping transfer tax is based upon both the projected and the actual transfer to the skip person. For example, a grandchild whose parents are still alive today. For both charitable lead trust types, the donor can initially allocate generation skipping transfer tax exemption equal to the present value of the projected transfer to be made to the skip persons, just as with the gift tax. However, if the charitable lead annuity trust grows faster than the Section 7520 rate, then the additional generation skipping transfer tax will be due at the termination of the charitable lead annuity trust. Worse, if a charitable lead annuity trust grows slower than the Section 7520 rate, ultimately leaving less to the skip person than projected, there is no refund of the allocated generation skipping transfer tax exemption. In contrast, the ultimate amount of the transfer is irrelevant to the calculation of generation skipping transfer tax for a charitable lead unit trust. However, the charitable lead unit trust is not an ideal mechanism for transferring the growth above the Section 7520 rate because such growth must be shared with the charity. A charitable lead unit trust pays a fixed percentage of trust assets to the charity each year. Thus, more rapid growth results in higher payments to charity. As discussed previously, the donor may not retain the right to change the charitable beneficiary of a charitable lead trust. Otherwise, the assets of the charitable lead trust will still be included and taxed in the donor's estate. However, allowing another person, such as a family member, to have this right to change charities does not create estate tax problems for the donor. It does, however, create a potential negative result for generation skipping transfer tax if the trust will be paid to a, quote, skip person. In that case, leaving open the option to change the charitable beneficiary means that the transfer to the skip person is a, quote, taxable distribution rather than a, quote, taxable termination.
Under the generation skipping transfer tax rules, taxes from a quote taxable distribution are owed by the recipient skip person. This from Internal Revenue Code Section 2603A1, but taxes from a quote taxable termination are owed by the trust itself. That from Internal Revenue Code Section 2603A. For example, if a million dollars in generation skipping transfer taxes were due in a taxable termination, the trust could pay those taxes with no negative consequences to the recipient. But if the trust paid a million dollars in generation skipping transfer taxes in a taxable distribution, the trust would be paying an obligation of the recipient, meaning that the recipient would have received an additional $1 million gift that would itself be subject to the generation skipping transfer tax. Although a non-grantor charitable lead trust can create significant potential tax advantages, as with other charitable planning techniques, it is important to limit those techniques to clients with charitable interests. There are other ways to reduce estate taxes that do not involve making gifts to charity. For the non-charitable client, these techniques will inevitably be more appropriate. For example, a client may transfer excess growth to the next generation with similar results using a grantor retained annuity trust. Although this is not a perfect match for a charitable lead trust, for example, the client must outlive the term of the grantor retained annuity trust in order for the estate to receive the tax benefit, such techniques will typically be more appropriate than charitable strategies for the client who does not desire to make gifts to charity. This has been Charitable Lead Trusts Part 3, Special Trust Types with Professor Russell James. Join us next time for Charitable Lead Trusts Part 4, Non-Grantor Charitable Lead Trusts.